guys, I'm Julia from There Goes Infinity and today I am giving you guys some truths about UT Austin. So first off, I wanted to dedicate this video to the class of 2022. Yay! Um, I know some of you guys have let me know down in the comments below and I haven't had a moment to like share with you guys, but I am so proud of you guys for getting in and for those of you who are still waiting to hear back, hang in there. I know it's gonna feel like forever, but it's totally worth the wait. Hook them. So question number one is what are some of the pros and cons of UT? So I'm gonna start out with the pros. I think the biggest one is the campus culture. You are at such a prestigious school if you're at UT and I personally have noticed that the students are beyond excited about being there. You know, die-hard Longhorns, uh, they rep their school proudly. I've got a giant hook em horns on my back right now. And uh, it's just one of those things that you're so proud of being in that community. And there's so much like diversity on campus of just, not just of people, but of opportunities and of things to learn. It's absolutely amazing. I think that's what brings a lot of people into UT is that big school spirit huge Texas personality and uh, the fact that there's so much to do here. A couple of cons about UT though, I definitely have my share of input on this which is part of the reason why I want to be a mentor. It's because I want to learn more about the school and figure out a little bit more about it. Class size. I think the fact that a lot of your class are going to be huge makes it not so much that it's overwhelming in the actual classroom environment but it is challenging to sometimes get in contact with your professors. It can be a struggle to get answers, uh, questions answered if you have them. Uh, and of course, navigating the campus too. You kind of have to do a little bit of guesswork and everything that you want an answer for, you kind of have to go and do research for it, which is okay. It's just a matter of like knowing who to go to for those answers. It can be really overwhelming as a freshman I'd say that's probably like the biggest con about UT. I don't know. Next one is, are the classes at UT too big? I'm gonna say yes and no on this one. So, UT is a huge school. There are 50,000 people there and it's really hard when everybody has the same introductory university core requirements to take, but personally, I think UT does a pretty great job accommodating this. I, do, I have classes that are really big. I had roughly, I think, 250 or 300 people in my economics class this past semester, but you are going to be in classes that are much smaller uh, within your first year. Like, my psychology class was only about 30 kids, and it was really great. I could go and talk to my professor virtually anytime I wanted to, plus we had online messaging and just all of these things so the university accommodates for its size I feel like but that shouldn't be something that is very daunting because you adapt to the learning style very quickly if that makes sense what is the MSS program so I'm really glad you asked this MSS is a two-year introductory program to UT and you work with a mentor during your first semester actually you keep that mentor I'm sorry you keep that mentor for the duration of your first year and they you'd go out and do social events with them you uh, learn about UT with them throughout your first and second semesters at UT so personally this is actually what I'm gonna do next year as my job just during the school year is I'm gonna be a mentor for this program so you know class of 2022 if you get accepted your girl might be your mentor. So MSS is a group of approximately 80 Macomb students and rather than being in a FIG or first year interest group, you're gonna be in MSS. So the difference is that you are usually, you have different lectures, you have a couple of different opportunities involved in there. You're required to take, you know, you take one honors course um, per semester and you also um, go to various events and things like that but the way that they choose people for MSS at least as far as they have told us is that they usually choose people that are based on a unique demographic so the first requirement is like academic excellence in high school um, but after that it can be a they need a variety of factors so it can be if you have like a unique life circumstance if you come from like a small town or a place that like not many UT students come from that can be another factor that like qualifies you for MSS um, other factors just include like 
small business owners. You know, if you have a business in high school, this can be a big qualifying thing. And just a number of other things that essentially make incoming students seem unique in terms of McCombs. So MSS is really cool. It's given me an opportunity to meet quite a few unique people um, just from all around Texas and the world. And it's just been really, really cool to be involved in it. Because you don't do as much your second year, but you're still meeting with uh, your MSS uh, peer groups and things like that but it's very very cool and that's kind of what drew me in to be a mentor is that you work with such unique people. What's the weather like at UT? Does it ever get too hot? Yes and yes. Um, Austin weather as you probably know if you've read anything about Austin online it is wild. It is just all over the spectrum and I will say that it does get fairly hot during the year. Um, it is really hot to walk to your classes like August, September, and I'd say the early half of October. Again, I haven't been there for like a spring semester, but I can guess from living in Austin already that the uh, last two months of the school year are going to be the hottest throughout the year. Um, however, it can get cold here in the winter, I will warn you. Um, we get 30 degree weather all the time in the winter here, and uh, we've had snow twice now. So it does get cold, you know, you're gonna need a good variety of clothes if you're packing to come to UT. Is it hard to transfer into UT? Yes, um, I've heard, so an option that a lot of students go with UT is they will go to ACC, which is Austin Community College, and they will study their first year to get their requirements out of the way at ACC. So these students have to work really, really hard um, to get through all of their required classes, and then after that, if they have a sufficient GPA and a few other qualifications, they can transfer into UT without a problem. However, um, if you're asking about transferring between majors, there are certain majors that are easier to transfer into versus others. I don't really know which ones are like the easiest per se to transfer into, but usually like those programs you just apply directly into them starting off, unless you like changed your mind of what you want to do throughout college, which totally happens by the way. Um, but I know I can tell you about Macomb specifically. It is very, very challenging to transfer into. You're gonna need like 30 credit hours, or at least at the time that I'm filming this, it's 30 credit hours. You need to have all of your um, prerequisites done to uh, declare your major, and you need to have over like a 3.6 GPA, which is very, very challenging to do, I will say. Um, so, Transferring in like between majors can be a little tricky sometimes, but again, the advisors are amazing, the uh, staff at UT are great, and they really do want to make sure that you're fulfilling your dreams when you're at school. Can I declare my major at orientation if I don't like the one I picked? Um, I don't know exactly on this one. This is more of like a ask your advisor question or um, a good place to contact is the UT Registrar. They have a lot of answers for uh, things regarding your major, but I do believe it is possible. What was my first impression of UT? Um, my first impression of UT was I was just like jaw dropped. I remember, so I remember the first time I went on a campus tour was January, 2017 so it was like after I gotten accepted I went to go tour UT and uh, we went to just like a housing fair and a bunch of other things with my family and I was just I remember that moment I was so you know I even remember what I was wearing too I was standing underneath that giant UT tower and it's it was like around noon and so it just was like dinging on the hour and I, it was just so beautiful you know you stand on the front lawn of the mall and you know on one side of you there's this huge bell tower um with a fantastic library inside by the way great study spot and then behind you is the south mall and you literally have this gorgeous view that just stretches out all the way to the capitol building so it's really like my first impression of ut was just how beautiful it was really. It was just kind of this moment of like, wow, I've wanted to go here for like a decade and I'm finally here. It was just so breathtaking. How many clubs is too many? Um, I'm gonna assume that you mean organization <laughs> clubs. 
I think a good rule of thumb for this one is you don't want to exceed the amount of hours that you have on your schedule. So let's say you're taking 13 hours of classes. I don't think you are going to want to be spending more than 13 hours in organizations slash works during your week. Um, now of course if you're taking like 21 hours or something like that, this rule is a little more variable because fitting in 21 hours of class and 21 hours of an organization is probably going to drive you into the ground. I'd, I'd recommend as a freshman, what I've been trying to do is keep it under 15 hours a week of just like other stuff. And that's all of your organizations, by the way. You will find that you will get overwhelmed, things are going to start overlapping, and it's going to be hard to keep a balance of keeping your grades up and your extracurriculars up at the same time. You know, you, you are there for a degree and you have to kind of prioritize like your education versus the experiences you're getting. How many classes did you take your first semester? Uh, so I took 13 hours my first semester. I know that doesn't sound like a lot to people, but at UT I think it's pretty average to take anywhere between 13 and 15 hours versus like upwards of 17 hours a semester just because of the rigor of the programs. Um, you're gonna have discussion class, discussion hours, you're going to have office hours you want to count in there, you're going to have exams periods, so you do want to keep things pretty tame at least your first semester, and then once you figure out what you can actually handle, you're free to add on classes whenever you'd like in that terms. Whenever your registration sheet is open, you're free to go. Um, so anyway, I took 13 hours, but because of my um, MSS requirements and uh, I think another like seminar thing I was taking, it added up to about 16 hours of class a week. Is it hard to get into UT if you're not top 6%? Yeah, I hate to break it to you, but it is a little more challenging when you don't have that security blanket of automatic admissions. Um, and for those of you that are out of state, there is a Texas rule where if you are in the top 6% of your graduating class in high school, you have automatic admission to UT Austin. Remember that UT really does look at all these things. They're not going to be all judgmental just because you don't have that 6%. Uh, on your resume. It's totally okay in this situation what you're gonna want to do is just focus on getting the best test scores you can and you're also going to want to commit you know some time for extracurriculars and write a good essay and just really you know pour your heart out into the rest of the application process. What are some popular places to live at UT? So some of the popular places that I know that a lot of students live at are going to be Jester East and West, which are the two most popular and most social dorms I'd say at UT, and I know a few like girl specific ones. So there's for example Kin Solving, which is a girls dorm only, very very cute, um, and a, there are a couple other popular ones, so like the Honors Quad, you know. People are of course going to want to live there because you're around like-minded uh, individuals. And there are also, I think San Jacinto is another fairly popular one. I've met a lot of people that la live at San Jack. Um, however, there are off-campus places as well. Um, if you're a girl, you can live at SRD, which is the Scottish Rite Dormitory. It's a beautiful building. It's going to be more pricey than on-campus residents just because of the amenities that you have, but you're going to have your own dining hall and it's really great. And then a lot of students too. Uh, live, let's see, a lot of them live between Callaway and Castilian. Those are great first year and second year places to live. And there's also a very large demographic of students that live at Riverside, which is a suburb that's roughly 10 minutes out of the city. So you're going to need a bus or a car to get to your classes, but the living spaces are huge and much lower priced than on campus. So the last question is, what is my best tip for applying to UT? Whew, this is tricky. My best tip for applying to UT is to focus on your application. The reason I say this is because if you are creating your applications so that you're molding into another demographic that you're not a part of, you're not going to be as successful because UT isn't going to see you as a unique student. They're going to more see you as 
oh, you're supposed to fit in with this group of people or that group. And that's ultimately up to you to decide when you get to the school. You know, um, this means that in your essay, you know, write about something that you really mean it, you know, write something that is passionate from your heart. Um, for your extracurriculars, talk about, you know, what made you excited about being in them. You know, if you have an extenuating circumstance that brought your grades down, um, such as like a family event or travel or something like that that held your grades back uh, during high school, explain that to them. And they're not just based on test scores. Convey as much as what makes you unique on your application. So again, I wanted to shout out this video to the class of 2022. You guys are so lucky to have gotten into UT and it's really going to be, if you decide to go there, which I really hope you do, uh, it's gonna be such a life-changing experience. You're gonna learn so much. And again, I wanted to thank everybody who's commented on my How I Got Into UT Austin video or any of my other uh, University of Texas themed videos. Of course, if you're watching this as someone who is a junior or a sophomore in high school, I just wanna wish you the best of luck in you know your applications when you get to them. So anyway, I wanted to thank you guys for watching this video and be sure that if you enjoyed it you like comment and subscribe to there goes infinity and I'll catch you guys in my next video hook them lovelies <laughs>